Nothing was destroyed. Hi, I'm Dave Arnott, the Christian Economist. Welcome to another edition of a podcast on Christian and economics. Well, to start the podcast today, I'm returning to my management roots and citing a book by a guy named James Surowiecki. The book is called The Wisdom of Crowds. He points out that none of us know everything. All of us are smarter than any of us. And the point is, the more views you seek on a subject, the better you understand it. This is certainly true of our Christian lives, isn't it? How are we supposed to understand God? But as we meet with others and study and listen to their views, we get a clearer understanding of God. It's much like we're looking through a glass darkly, but the glass becomes a little more clear the more views we get. Well, let's take this view to economics. I'm recording this on March 20 of the year 2020. We're in the depths of the coronavirus crisis. And as I was reading the Wall Street Journal, I take Sir Wiki's advice. The articles are written by one or two people who may have some expertise in the area. But then the Wall Street Journal started something interesting a couple of years ago when they put it online. They allow readers to add comments at the bottom. And I think those are sometimes more instructive than the article itself. Because often you get people who are experts at this particular area. And for me, particularly, it's finance. I mean, I know economics, but I don't know finance very well. And so I'm always looking for financial answers to give me a more fully orbed view of what I just read. Well, I was reading an article the other day about this subject, the subject of the coronavirus and how it's affecting the economy. And so in the comments, you usually have to to suffer through a few that are either snarky or politically slanted, but sometimes you get some really good ones. And I got to this guy, he wrote a three-word sentence, which is the topic of my discussion with you today. Nothing was destroyed. That's fascinating. Because right now on March 20th, we are in the depths of an economic, probably recession. See, we, we record recessions as two consecutive quarters of contracting GDP. Well, we're at March 20, pretty certain the first quarter will contract the GDP, and it will will contract during the second. By definition, we probably are in a recession. Okay, But compare this to what the guy said in the article. Nothing was destroyed. See, after a war, things are destroyed. You have to think about going to a small town in perhaps Poland or Lithuania, where I've taught many times. So you come back to this small town after World War II. The infrastructure is destroyed. I mean, food and water come first. So let's say perhaps the water tower is damaged, not even destroyed, damaged. And so you turn around and say, okay, we need the welder to fix that. Well, the welder was either killed or displaced. His truck was stolen by one of the invading armies. Even if you had the labor and you had the welder, Where are you going to get gas to put in the welding machine to power it? How are you going to get electricity? Because the electricity lines are down. So water is is harmed. Labor is not there. The sewer lines don't work. You know, often many people die after war because the infrastructure is gone. So even if you can ship in clean water and, and food, what do you do with sewage? I mean, this is what happens. And so the whole infrastructure is broken down. That's why this guy's point in the Wall Street Journal was so interesting. In the depths of what we think is an economic recession, nothing has been destroyed in the coronavirus epic, right? Okay, so economics, by definition, is the means of production and distribution of products under scarcity. But in this economic recession, nothing has been destroyed. Think about Disney World. No one is going to Disney World today. Their revenue is going to be zero. But what has been destroyed at Disney World? Nothing. Nothing. The day they open the gates, the electricity is going to work in every building and in every street. The water is going to work to every fountain. Every toilet is going to flush. The gas lines are all there. The security forces, all the labor, nothing has been destroyed. So we can expect the economy to pick up pretty quickly when this thing is over, as, as a side effect here, as a matter of fact, I was just talking about war. This is not my subject today, but I just can't resist this 30-second step to the side. That's why 
the United States had a positive balance of trade from 1945 to 1975. In the post-war period, Japan and Germany were destroyed. Their infrastructure was destroyed. They could not produce anything. In 30 years, they became the numbers two and three economies in the world by 1975. But from 1945 to 1975, the only place you could get anything was from America because nothing was destroyed in America. That's why the balance of trade was positive during those 30 years and has been negative ever since. The point is, balance of trade for a developed economy like the United States is a natural effect. When we look back to the 45 to 75 period, that was an alternative. That was a strange environment. Anyway, back to my subject, right? Well, what we all want to know is, when is this economy going to come back? I, I don't know. I mean, my wife works in medical research. She knows more about this than I do. I've been reading articles and trying to figure it out. I don't know, and it seems as though nobody knows. March 19th yesterday, Wuhan, China, where this thing started, had their first day without any reported cases, so they say. So maybe that's two months. I don't know. Two or three months, probably. I don't know the epidemi epidemiological part of it. I know the economic part of it. Nothing was destroyed. So the day they open Disney World, the day they open restaurants, everything will come back really quickly. In two months, maybe? Maybe in three. Don't hold me that prediction. I'm not good at that. I'm good at the economic part. I'm not good at the disease transmission part. But this will be, this will be the, the bad part of it. Companies that are well capitalized, you know, large public trading companies, and large equity companies, they will do okay because they can obtain financing to get through this difficulty. It's the small organizations who will struggle. Individual restaurants, how are they going to capitalize themselves through this difficult period? They will have a great deal more trouble. Let's look at the economics part of this. Well, there's monetary and fiscal policy. They've pulled out all the stops, by the way. That phrase comes from an organ on the back of an organ, it has a stop, which stops the air from coming out. When you pull out the stops, the organ operates at its loudest. That's pulling out all the stops. Monetary policy, all the stops were pulled out last week. Going into this crisis, interest rates were in the range of 1.25 to 1.5. They've now been reduced to 0 to 0.25. A whole percentage point was taking off. And they're talking about quantitative easing, meaning money supply. Remember, there's two things the Fed can do in monetary policy. One is they can change the interest rate. The other is they can increase the money supply. They have done both. They have pulled out all the stops. Fiscal takes a little longer to get going, but President Trump is talking about a trillion dollar stimulus uh, and talking about reducing taxes. One way they've reduced taxes already is delaying the payment of personal income taxes. So in fiscal policy, remember, make it simple, two things can be done. Fiscal policy, the government can tax, they can spend. They're talking about reducing taxes and increasing spending. Whether they should or not is a subject for another day. But the economics, they have done their part. Now let's look at us as Christian economists. How should we view this thing and how should we take it? Well, I'm going to give a longer scripture today than usual, and I'm doing it at the end instead of the beginning. The other th third thing about unusual today is I'm going to the Old Testament for our subject today, and I'm reading long, more verses than usual, so get comfortable. This is Joshua 1, 1 through 9. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give to them, to the Israelites. I'm going to depart and come back to verse 3 in just a minute. Do you get the point? They're crossing a river. They're starting anew. They're moving into a land that is prepared for them, that is ready to economically produce. That's where we'll be in two or three months because nothing was destroyed. Now I'm back to verse 3. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon, and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Let me depart from the scripture for just a minute again. God has always been with us. God is with us in the depths of the coronavirus crisis. 
He was with us before. He was with us after. The, the point is, all of the means of production and distribution will still be there when we come back two or three months from now, when the economy comes back. Okay, I'm in verse 6 now. Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Verse 7. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Verse 9 is the end of what I want to read to you today. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Nothing was destroyed. The economy will come back. We have hope. Why do we have hope? We have hope because Jesus died for our sins and we believe in the resurrection. We believe that God is with us and the economy will come back because nothing was destroyed. Well, I'm Dave Arnott, the Christian Economist, where our slogan is fear not, Tell the truth, earn a profit. See you next time.